Good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending our webinar. We're just going to give it another quick minute as we have participants coming in. Good morning, everyone. We're just going to give it another 30 seconds as we have participants coming into our webinar. All right. Good morning, everyone. We'll go ahead and get started. We'll kick it off with uh, some housekeeping stuff. Let's go to the next slide. Welcome everyone to our 2022-2023 budget briefing. Um, some logistics for today's webinar. Closed captioning is available. You can access that by clicking the icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. We'll also have a question and answer session um, if time allows at the end. Um, you know, Share your questions also and comments using the Q&A icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. We'll be answering those uh, throughout the webinar session as well. Participants are all muted during the presentation. Use the raise hand icon during the Q&A portion to request your line to be unmuted if time allows. And the presentation today will also be recorded and archived and you can visit CDA's YouTube channel to access that. Next slide. So I'd like to welcome Susan DeMars, our CDA director. Susan. Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we're so happy to be sharing with you the outcome of the budget process um, on day seven of the state's new fiscal year. Uh, I know that many of you who are joining us today follow the budget very closely and will be reinforcing things that you already know, but we hope to share um, items with those who have not been as close to the work. Um, and we're extremely proud here at the Department of Aging on behalf of the California Health and Human Services Agency and the governor's office in partnership with the legislature to share the results of this year's budget process. For those of you who, who know, um, this was a record budget for the state of California, $234 billion budget. In the health and human services space um, that we work um, most often in, um, a, a record investment of $68 billion general fund and a total of $101 billion in total funds. Here at the Department of Aging, where we'll be focused today on, on investments made to the department and through the department, um, we're, we've never seen a budget the likes of this. And we want to thank um, the secretary, the governor, and the legislature for committing and recommitting to older adults and people with disabilities and to the state's master plan for aging. This year that we're entering, um, we're now one week in, uh, the Department of Aging's total budget with state and federal dollars combined is $466 million. Um, back in 2019, um, before the pandemic, before the master plan for aging, the total budget of the department was 238 million. So half, half of the size it is today. And this significant increase represents um, a commitment to this year and to future years. And we're already starting to look ahead to the, next, to the next budget cycle, as well as the next two years of the Master Plan for Aging Initiatives. But we wanted to pause today to celebrate these investments that you'll be hearing more about, to hear from you as our participants through the Q&A and time at the end. And to, to just reflect and celebrate on these investments that build on investments from prior years and will take us into future years. So with that, I wanna thank especially the California Department of Aging staff. You'll be hearing from many of our executive leaders today. Um, they worked very, very, very hard throughout the budget process. I wanna thank them for their dedication, their time, their effort, their expertise. I wanna thank our partners at the Department of Finance and within the Health and Human Services Agency that made this budget possible. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mark Beckley first. 
um, to hear from you a bit about the current initiatives underway at the department. So Mark is our Chief Deputy Director. Mark, take it away. Great, thank you so much, Susan. Um, yeah, so CDA currently has 18 major initiatives underway that will help us implement the various components of the Master Plan for Aging, as well as CDA's strategic plan. These initiatives were funded in the 2021-22 fiscal year through a variety of different funding sources, uh, such as the Home and Community-Based Spending Plan, or the HCBS Spending Plan, the State General Fund, and several different spe uh, special fund sources. I'm gonna provide an update on a few of these initiatives that have had significant recent activity, and then our Deputy Director for the Division of Aging Policy, Research, and Equity, uh, Sarah Steenhausen, will touch on a few of these initiatives as well, as well as other initiatives outside of CDA that also help move the Master Plan for Aging forward. So the first initiative I'd like to highlight is what we call our Access to Technology for Older Adults and Individuals with Disabilities program. This provides 50 million uh, for uh, a county program uh, to provide uh, grants to counties to help them bridge the digital divide for older adults and individuals with disabilities in this area. The funding can be used for a variety of different purposes, such as purchasing devices, service plans, trainings, and digital infrastructure. Uh, CDA will be releasing a request for grant applications from the counties um, within the next two weeks, and we expect all county grants to be awarded by October. The next program I'd like to highlight is the Alzheimer's uh, Daycare and Resource Center Pilots Program, also known as Cal Compass. This provides $5 million uh, in HCBS funding to establish pilot programs at licensed adult day health centers to enable them to provide uh, dementia capable services uh, to prevent institutionalization and advance health equity. Later this month, CDA will be re releasing a request for applications uh, to invite adult day centers to send their proposals uh, to establish these pilots at their sites. Um, we expect these grants to be awarded um, in the October timeframe as well. The next program I'd like to highlight is the um, Senior Employment Services uh, Program. So this is $17 million to expand employment slots and pay participants at the California minimum wage for the Senior Community Services Employment Program. Um, and in April, CDA released $7 million of this grant funding, and we expect the balance of the funding to be released later this year. Um, also included in the HCBS spending plan is additional funding for AAAs to augment their fall prevention, family caregiving, legal services, and intergenerational meals programs. Uh, CDA issued uh, contracts for these funds in June, and we will be releasing the funds as soon as the contracts are executed locally. And then the final program I'd like to provide an update on is nutrition infrastructure. So the HCBS spending plan included $38 million uh, for local grant, grant funding to improve and expand uh, nutrition infrastructure for our local meal providers. Um, CDA issued a request for proposals in March, and several of those proposals have already been received back from the AAAs. We expect to release um, and issue grant awards no later than September 30th. So those are the key updates that I wanted to highlight. I also wanted to uh, mention the link at the bottom of this page. If you'd like to learn more about our 18 initiatives, um, please feel free to visit that link. We'll be updating those um, projects um, you know, uh, as frequently as monthly, but at least every quarter, so you can see where how we're doing. I'll now turn it over to Sarah Steenhausen, who will provide you with an overview of some of the key budget investments for the Master Plan for Aging. Great, well, thank you so much, Mark, and thank you to everybody for joining us today. What I'm going to provide right now is kind of a context of the investments that have been made to date for the Master Plan for Aging. So these are our current MPA investments, and later on, I will give a kind of high level overview of some of the investments that were included in this year's 2022-23 Budget Act. So as you all know, uh, when the Master Plan for Aging was launched in early 2021, it really provided an amazing opportunity to double down on the state's efforts to plan for the rapid aging of our population and the growing diversity of our population. So we're really pleased that in last year's budget, 
there were a number of really critical uh, investments made across the service delivery system that address, for example, healthcare affordability and access. We saw an expansion of Medi-Cal to undocumented adults age 50 and over. The elimination of the Medi-Cal asset test, which will be phased in by 2024. That's really significant in terms of helping to fight poverty among older adults um, and people with disabilities and making them eligible for the Medi-Cal program. Um, as well as tremendous investments in launching the CalAIM program, emphasizing the role of community supports and enhanced care management, which provide critical connections to the services in the home and the community that older adults and people with disabilities need to, to live with dignity and independence. Um, in the area of navigation, we're really proud of the investments that were made in advancing and building California's no wrong door system. That, one of the key initiatives that Mark just highlighted. Um, we have resources that have been dedicated to helping launch a 24 seven live help contact center that will help streamline um, how people can access resources at the local level, providing a warm handoff to our ADRC and AAA partners at the local level. So that is something that we are starting to um, invest in the initial infrastructure on and we'll be uh, looking at building it out over the years to come. We also are advancing a statewide web portal that will provide uh, access to information across the system, no matter where people live, helping again to streamline access to services at the local level, along with a standardized assessment so that people can have an understanding of what their needs are and where they may be able to access services. Next, I wanted to highlight uh, some of the tremendous advancements, advancements in the workforce issue. As you all know, we are facing a crisis of uh, in the workforce area, particularly um, really across the continuum of care, but um, focusing on the programs and services in the home and the community and the direct care workers that are really needed to provide the services and supports to people as they age. So CDA is launching our own direct care workforce initiative, and we're really pleased to be working on that in partnership with our sister departments, um, Department of Social Services and Healthcare Access and Information, who are also launching their own workforce initiatives. It really is a partnership across agency, and you'll be, um, you can find more information on our program cal called California Grows, which will be launched this fall, um, providing important opportunities for training and stipends um, of our direct care workforce. Um, we also had a number of important investments in last year's budget on Alzheimer's prevention and preparedness, the launch of the Dementia Aware Program to help uh, physicians be able to screen people on Medi-Cal for dementia, a brain health initiative that was launched and also uh, with funding, additional funding this year, as well as advancing Alzheimer's research. Um, there were a number of investments through the uh, in HCBS infrastructure um, that were supported both by general fund and the home and community-based services spending plan that Mark referenced. A number of investments that I can't run through, but really go, uh, don't have the time to detail, but they go a long way in building um, the strength of our system. And we recognize there's a lot more to do, but we believe that this is a really great uh, investment to launch us on that path. Um, also addressing the issue of long-term services and supports data development. We're really excited to be working closely with the Department of Healthcare Services on the launch of the LTSS data dashboard. Um, that is going to be a really important connection to our uh, data dashboard for aging, as well as a number of other efforts, such as our um, the Department of Healthcare Services Home and Community-Based Services Gap Analysis that this year we will be supplementing with additional funds in the budget to include the non-Medi-Cal home and community-based services. Um, this is a really important way to understand where the gaps in the system are and where the roadmap might be to build out our infrastructure across the state. So you'll be receiving more information from DHCS as well as from us in the months to come about advancing that roadmap process. And then finally, in the area of housing, um, we saw over $10.3 billion given towards affordable housing initiatives in last year's budget, as well as really critical programs like HomeSafe, Project HomeKey, 
and community care expansion. Um, those three programs are being run out of our uh, out of the Department of Social Services and provide important linkages across services and housing to help people stay in the community and avoid institutionalization. All of that said, we recognize across all of these areas, we still have a lot of work to do and our stakeholder partners have been so critical in helping inform our understanding through all of our various stakeholder advisory committees. And we're looking forward to building out the next few, uh, few years of initiatives in the next iteration of the master plan. So at this point, I'm gonna um, pass it along to my colleague, Thomas, who will uh, provide an overview of the CDA specific inv investments in the 2022 Budget Act. Go ahead, Thomas. Thank you, Sarah. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Thomas Cameron. I'm the Deputy Director of Administration here for the Department of Aging. Today, I also have with me Nicole Shimosaka, who is our Chief Financial Officer, and she'll be assisting with presenting on these various budget items. Next slide, please. So I just wanna kick us off by again, highlighting some of the info that Susan touched on, um, but breaking it down a little bit differently. Um, so with the enactment of this new budget, uh, CDA is seeing an increase of $171.045 million to our budget. And this includes both one-time and ongoing funding. Um, Nicole, if you want to walk us through our uh, new investments on this slide, please feel free. Absolutely. Thank you, Thomas, and good morning, everyone. <clears throat> so um, the information I'm going to go over would be all of the legislative investments that CDA is seeing this year. These are all one time in nature, and these are um, provided to the department through stakeholder proposals. The first one I wanted to discuss was the Community-Based Adult Services, or CBAS, COVID mitigation grants. Um, we have received $61.4 million um, to be used between now and June 30th, 2026, um, to improve the health, safety, and well-being of vulnerable, at-risk, um, older adults and people with disabilities through safe access at the end center <clears throat> congregate services. So this is um, grant funds that are going to be available to local um, adult day programs in order to um, make the facilities uh, safer in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, and then hopefully better prepared should anything um, ever occur of this kind again. The second investment is one that was um, brought forward by our C4A Association. It's the Older Californians Act Modernization, and it's a three-year pilot program um, intended to fund um, Older Californians Act programs that are written in statute but have not been um, ha have not been funded since 2008 when the recession hit, and it also includes nutrition funding. Some of the programs that um, are included in um, are the um, family and caregiver supports, senior volunteer development, and aging in place, and then other community based service programs as well. Um, we also received 12.5 million one-time funding for the Healthier Homes Nursing Pilot Project. And what this is going to fund is it's going to fund um, <clears throat> uh, uh, registered nurses and community health care workers to provide health education, navigation, coaching, and care to residents in senior citizen housing developments through six major counties within the state. Those counties include um, Contra Costa, Fresno, Orange County, Riverside, Sacramento, San Diego, Shasta, and Sonoma. I'm sorry, that was more than six. That was seven, I believe. <laughs> and so that's $12.5 million one time in order for us to um, engage in this uh, pilot here at CDA. We also received $4.5 million in age-friendly community grants. This was a stakeholder proposal brought forward by AARP. Um, and what this one intends to do <clears throat> is um, it's available for expenditure through um, June 30th of 2025 to offer competitive grants for the purpose of planning and developing age-friendly action plans throughout the state. We also received $5 million in one-time funding for long-term services support research study. Um, CDA will be working with a local um, contractor and consultant in order to stand up this um, pro, um, funding opportunity. 
We received one-time long-term care um, facility visitation and public health emergencies working group funds. And what this is going to do is this is going to allow CDA to work with <clears throat> um, <clears throat> the um, Department of Public Health, Department of Social Services, and other stakeholders to develop um, policies and best practices for um, public health emergencies in long-term care facilities, including visitation. This, this um, funding is really intended to assist um, CDA and all of Cal HHS in um, better managing um, any sort of future pandemics or concerns that might present issues to the long-term care facilities. And last but not least, we've received $1 million in pass-through funding, which just means that it'll be um, funding that we just are able to hand off to the Cal Long-Term Care Compare.org website in order for them to finalize that the, the work they're doing on their website to provide resources to the state of California. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, next slide, please. So the next few items that I'm gonna go through represent the proposals submitted and developed on behalf of the administration with um, the California Department of Aging, the governor's office, Department of Finance, um, and they cover various different categories. Um, the first one is the transfer of the caregiver resource centers from the Department of Healthcare Services to the California Department of Aging. That represents um, an addition to CDA's budget of $15.463 million in two positions, um, and there will be a commensurate reduction to the Department of Healthcare Services budget um, as well. And CDA will assume, effective July 1st, has assumed, not will, um, responsibility and oversight for the 11 caregiver resource centers across California. The next investment is our Master Plan for Aging Implementation, our Phase 2. Um, and that is $1.933 million and 12 positions um, ongoing. And these resources and staffing cover various areas, and we'll go through those briefly. Um, we are getting a staffing to stand up a new enterprise data and research team. Uh, we are getting additional staff to uh, establish a new chief equity officer and our first ever tribal liaison. Um, we're getting an additional position to provide policy leadership in the Division of Aging Policy Research and Equity. Um, we are getting resources to expand our communications team in the areas of public, external, and stakeholder communications activity. And then we're also getting our first ever state public guardian liaison position. Um, additionally, there was a spring proposal for master plan and aging investments um, for various different initiatives and efforts, including the Aging and Disability Institute of Learning and Innovation, and that was for $682,000 and five positions ongoing. Um, additionally, $4 million will be allocated, and those are one-time funds to fund the non-Medi-Cal HCBS gap analysis, uh, building off the work that DHCS is doing with their HCBS gap analysis and their HCBS roadmap. Um, additionally, the department is receiving $375,000 and two positions ongoing to staff our disaster planning and preparedness um, team so we can do better coordination with our local partners and stakeholders on planning and responding and preparing for um, emergencies uh, as for things such as wildfires, the pandemic, um, PSPS power safety shutoffs and, and other things. And then the last portion of this proposal included $3.5 million one-time investment to fund an outreach and awareness campaign for the state long-term care ombudsman. And then additionally, the department received $500,000 and four positions ongoing to fund administrative workload increases um, associated with the growth of the department tied to things like the master plan investments, um, transfer of programs, and uh, various other administrative workloads in the area of human resources, finance, and our what we refer to as business services areas. Next slide, please. 
So those are all of our budget investments that are included in this new budget act. Um, a summary of the enacted 2022-23 California state budget is available via the link posted in our PowerPoint, and this will be made publicly available after our meeting today. And then um, additionally, we've also included a link to the investments made in year one of the master plan for aging. Um, these include both in funding and resource investments from the governor and the legislature. Um, and this ties back to what Sarah presented on as well earlier in her presentation. So very um, good information just to see the continued ongoing support and resources that both the administration and the legislature continue to commit to the Department of Aging and the Master Plan for Aging Implementation. Um, the last thing I want to mention, I know there wasn't a lot of detail in these slides on our investments. Um, the department is working to develop a more detailed budget summary, and we'll publicly post that in the coming weeks. And um, we will work with our communications team to ensure that information is shared with our stakeholder community as well. Uh, thank you. And next slide. And we'll hand it back to Sarah. Great. Well, thank you, Thomas. That's a perfect segue into um, what I will cover now, which is a very high level overview of some of the key MPA investments in this year's 2022-23 bu uh, budget. I, I just want to say that we too are working on a detailed budget fact sheet that will outline the number of investments across all five goal areas um, that really uh, are being led by our sister departments and agencies. So in the next few weeks, we plan to have that out. Um, so. Uh, I just wanted to touch on a few very high level uh, initiatives that that um, to call out today. So in terms of our commitment to advancing affordability and access, we're really pleased that the governor and legislature are advancing the concept um, of, of making Medi-Cal more affordable and specifically for people who face a very high sh uh, share of cost right now for Medi-Cal eligibility. So as you all may know, um, some individuals have to pay up to $600 for a share of cost in order to qualify for Medi-Cal. The state has committed by 2025 to uh, reduce that share of costs, making Medi-Cal more affordable and fighting poverty. However, um, that will be subject to future budget appropriations. So it really is dependent on our budget and fiscal outlook, which will be determined in 2024. Um, we also have a number of investments in home and community-based services. Um, our, our colleagues at the Department of Rehabilitation are leading in advancing the Community Living Fund. Um, this, but this year's budget included $10 billion, sorry, $10 million to launch the Community Living Fund, which will provide critical tools to enable older adults and people with disabilities who are either at risk of institutionalization or trying to transition from an institutional setting to the community, but need additional resources that can be used for a variety of purposes to help them transition. Um, we're also really pleased that uh, the IHSS program had significant investments for the establishment of a permanent backup system. This is so critical to people seeking uh, support from their IHSS workers. Um, and also we are very pleased that uh, the budget includes investments in additional investments in the state's healthy brain initiative uh, for people impacted by Alzheimer's. And then finally, um, additional investments made in building the workforce pipeline. So as I mentioned earlier, last year's budget included um, a number of investments uh, related, I think about $1.7 billion last year in developing training and incentives for the workforce. This year's popular, uh, this year's budget focuses really on building the pipeline. So a number of really critical initiatives, just to call out a few, um, building our community health workers workforce, which will provide a tremendous opportunity for our aging and disability partners to uh, develop and recruit community health workers in the community, as well as uh, building our social workers and um, the population, the, the number of nurses that are available to serve the population. So those are just a few very high level overview of some of the items in this year's budget, but um, all of this uh, will, we will provide additional information um, in the weeks to come. So thank you for that. And I now want to uh, pass it along to my colleague, Adam Willoughby, who will talk a bit about the legislative process at this time.
Great, thank you so much, Sarah, uh, and good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk uh, uh, briefly about some uh, next steps for uh, the legislature. So, um, you know, what we've been hearing about uh, in the previous presentations really represent uh, investments made through the Budget Act and then the corresponding uh, 20 plus budget trailer bills. And so while the legislature has, you know, passed the budget, for this year, their their work is not done yet, right? So the that they still have hundreds of policy bills that they are going to need to address uh, before they adjourn uh, at the end of August. Um, and while they're on summer break right now, when they return, one of their primary focuses is going to be consideration of policy bills uh, with fiscal impacts, right? Um, and so, you know, on the topic of a budget and policy nexus, over the past several years, we've been seeing a higher volume uh, of policy going through the budget, uh, due in large part to uh, the surpluses, the, the budget condition that the, the state of California has been so fortunate to, to have. Um, and so, you know, a couple examples of that. Uh, uh, this year, a um, couple policy bills that have gone uh, through the budget, a and I should caveat that these go through the budget either verbatim uh, as they are written uh, uh, as the in the policy bill, or sort of the concept goes through, right? Um, not necessarily with the same language. So, you know, a couple examples, uh, AB 2331, this is a Calderon bill. Uh, you heard uh, Nicole uh, Shimosaka mention this uh, during her presentation. This uh, is the bridge to recovery for adult day services that would provide grants to uh, adult day healthcare and adult day programs for the purposes of sort of mitigating their facilities uh, to, you know, better withstand uh, the effects of COVID and other uh, uh, other diseases. We we have seen this one go through. Uh, in AB 178, uh, which was the, the Budget Act. Um, an, a, another example is uh, SB 861. So this is a Lamone, uh, Lamone bill. Uh, this would, um, you know, provide grants to community-based uh, organizations to fund uh, uh, community health workers and, and promotoras. Uh, to provide dementia care um, uh, training uh, and, and resource navigation. We see a similar concept of this policy bill, uh, also in a, a budget trailer bill, SB 184. This is a, a, a health uh, trailer bill. Um, and so for, for bills that enroll, um, you know, looking ahead, the, 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 the governor is going to have to the end of September to consider these bills, uh, uh, either a sign or a veto. And for bills that are not vetoed, most are going to go into effect uh, January 1, 2023, unless they have an urgency clause. Uh, and then for everyone's reference, uh, CDA will be developing and posting a chapter bill report to our website that will sort of serve as uh, a roundup of all aging and disability related chaptered legislation for, uh, for this uh, legislative year. Okay, uh, I believe with that, I will hand it back to Susan. Thank you, Adam. And for our next, for, um, I thanked, of course, um, the hardworking CDA staff, the California Health and Human Services Agency staff, Department of Finance staff, the legislative staff, and of course, the governor and legislature. Um, what I didn't thank were all of the stakeholders, individuals, organizations, um, trade associations, who put forward so many of these excellent ideas and concepts and proposals that were funded in the budget. And what I wanted to close with sharing is that um, we highly value the stakeholder process. We have um, seven stakeholder advisory groups that inform the department, the agency, the governor's office, and the master plan. And we are convening all of our stakeholder groups on September 20th. All of you are invited to join California for All Ages and Abilities Day of Action. 
And um, we're very proud at the Department of Aging to be hosting this, to offer this day-long program um, in partnership with the Impact Committee, which is the Implementing the Master Plan for California Together Committee. That's the steering and oversight group that, that keeps, um, keeps us on task with the Master Plan for Aging. And we, we greatly appreciate the generous support of our foundation partners who are making this day of action available to everyone free of charge. Um, so we want you to have on your calendars September 20th, um, nine to four in Sacramento in person. Um, you're all included and that's where we'll begin um, really shaping the next two years of the Master Plan for Aging initiatives and hearing the concepts and proposals um, we're so, so, so proud of this budget um, and how far it takes the department and the master plan and other um, departments and agencies, but we know we still have further to go. And that will be the focus of September 20th to hear from stakeholders um, from across the state um, about what is important, where there are still gaps, um, where, what we need to do more of, what, what we've overlooked. So we invite you to join us on September 20th. Registration will be um, announced uh, probably at the end of next week. Um, so the registration link, all of you who found this webinar, um, it will be provided to you. Um, we'll make sure we get the registration information out. Um, and so I wanted to close with that, that that's the next step in our stakeholder process. But in the time that we have remaining, um, we have a number of questions in the Q&A. Um, uh, Connie Nakano is going to um, tackle the questions in the Q&A. If you have other questions, please enter them there and we'll do our very best to um, answer them live um, today while you're with us. And in some cases, we may have to follow up with you. Connie, thanks. Thank you, Susan. Um, so now we'll go over to our question and answer session. Um, so thank you to all that have already put in some questions into the Q&A box. Uh, there have already been some questions that have been answered. Um, to ask a question, you may click the raise hand icon to request your line to be unmuted if you'd like to ask that live. If you're dialing in, you can press star nine to raise your hand or use the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen to submit your question electronically um, and we will answer that as well. Um, so as we're waiting to see if there's any hands being raised, there's a few questions here in the uh, inbox that we haven't responded to um, yet. Um, Question about uh, nutrition funding for intergenerational programs. They're asking if we can elaborate a little bit more. Do we have more information on that that we can elaborate? Would that be, is that something uh, maybe Mark or? Um, Hi. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. Or. Oh. I can go. There's, um, there's, we have a program memo listed on our CDA website that discusses the um, nutrition funding for the intergenerational activities opportunity at length. Um, I can certainly provide the link within the chat. And then if for further questions, um, there's uh, the contact inbox in there for the nutrition branch. So they'd be able to further answer. Great. Thank you, Nicole, for that answer. Um, so next question we've got here. Um, question about uh, when will HCBS Digital Connections Program release application to participate? Would that be Mark? Yeah, I can, I can speak to that really quickly. So um, right now we're still uh, developing the scope of that program. We expect to release a request for application in the fall, uh, likely around the September to October timeframe, and we hope to get grant awards out uh, by the end of the year. Awesome. Thank you for that, Mark. Let's see. No hands raised yet. Again, if you want to, oh, we've got a hand here. Um, Lydia, I'm going to not get your last name correct, <laughs> but Lydia Massell, uh, we're unmuting your microphone. You can ask your question live. Hi, Connie. Thank you. Hi, Susan. Hi, everybody at CDA. Um, I don't have a question. I just wanted to jump on and take this opportunity to publicly thank um, Susan, Sarah, all of you, the team at, at CDA for uh, listening to our plea for help um, with the bridge to recovery process and funding. Um, we stand ready to assist you in any way possible to get this program launched and out as expeditiously as possible, given the 
um, emerging new variants um, for COVID and also the staffing challenges that centers are facing, I'm sure um, similar to many of my colleagues who are listening to this webinar today and uh, critical to um, get folks back to center, but we have to do it very safely. So I just want to express our appreciation for listening and um, moving this forward um, as you have. So um, that's all, and uh, we look forward to working with y'all um, in the next few weeks to move this thing along. Awesome. Thank you very much for that comment, Lydia. Again, if you'd like to ask your question live, you can click on the raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen, or you can type in your question in the Q&A chat and we will read it live. Um, looks like there's a couple questions about some Senate bills, which it looks like Adam is responding to that. So you'll be able to see the answers uh, to the Q&A on that. Um, Susan, there's a comment about uh, increased workload at the state level. Did you wanna comment on that one? Yes, so it looks like that question, um, I'm glad to see recognition of the increase in workload at the state level. The budget doesn't recognize the increase in workload at the local level. Um, so this comes from Maggie Kraft and Maggie, we, we, we hear you that um, over the last couple of years, the one time only dollars that have come from the federal government, state government um, do create ad additional administrative burdens on programs like yours. Um, that's something we'd encourage. Um, we're very happy that the, the C4A proposal that was put forward um, was largely funded. And I, I would encourage you to work, work through C4A to identify those additional administrative um, costs and needs and, and to bring them forward um, so that we can, work, we, we can work together on that in the coming year. Thank you, Susan, for that. Um, let's go to, looks like there's a question about, is there any additional information on care courts? Do we have any information we're able to share? Nope, okay. Yeah, that's not something I'm current on as of this week. I know it's fast moving and has been changing, so um, we can get a follow-up on, on that one. Okay. Let's go to a live line. We have Cindy Soto. We'll unmute your microphone if you'd like to ask your question or make your comment live. Thank you. Um, and at the la last great, uh, at the last great um, budget cut in 2011, the funding for uh, public authorities and committees for IHSS was uh, cut back dramatically. It was 53,000 per year and, and now it's down to 6,000 per year. So I would like to know if the public authorities and committees will uh, receive the $50,000 a year uh, back this, this year, this budget. Do you know anything about that? You know, we'd have to learn more about the status of that one before responding. Um, so if, okay. if you share your email address, we can be sure to follow up with you. Thank you. Great. Let's go to um, question about, will you be assessing, accessing the California Community Colleges to provide or increase workforce training from health from home health care currently free, non-credit six-month program all the way through nursing and te technological specialists instead of building a new system. Um, thank you, Leslie, for that question. This is Sarah Steenhausen. Um, I really appreciate that because I understand that there are so many different initiatives and uh, underway right now related to workforce development, which is wonderful. Um, our program, will be focused on the home and community-based workforce in the community that is non-IHSS. We plan to, as part of this program, launch an innovation fund so that we will be taking request, requests for uh, proposals to launch initiatives. And absolutely, we want to utilize the resources that are existing out there. We do not want to reinvent the wheel. We want to work with all of the partners in the community that are providing these important trainings. So part of that will be, um, we anticipate releasing a request for information. So that will provide an important opportunity for these types of community partners to provide input 
on how to um, structure our fund and the innovations in it to make sure that we're uh, aligning with all of the work that is currently going on. Thank you, Sarah, for addressing that question. And again, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask live, uh, click on the raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen, or you can enter in your question into the Q&A chat. And it looks like, I think most of the questions have been answered in the Q&A. The last question is being answered right now um, by Nicole. Are there any other questions that anyone has? We'll just give it another minute. If you'd like to raise your hand or if you'd like to enter your question into the chat. As we're waiting, just a reminder, um, this uh, webinar today is being recorded, so it will be available on our CDA channel um, uh, shortly, uh, along with the presentation as well. Um, and also the uh, documents that we had um, uh, talked about earlier about uh, budget information will be available in a couple of weeks. It'll be posted on our website, um, and it'll also be posted if you keep up to date with the um, upcoming CDA events that go out weekly on Fridays. Uh, it will be in the in case you missed it section as well um, as soon as that posts. And Connie, I saw in the chat there's some questions about the um, Alzheimer's uh, Day Center um, pilot programs, and um, I can briefly address those. So uh, one of the questions was, uh, how can we find out more about um, the pilot programs and how to apply? Um, as I mentioned, the request for application, grant applications will be released within the next two weeks. So keep an eye out for that. And um, there's another question about can for-profit providers apply? Yes, so long as you're a licensed adult day health center, uh, everybody is free to apply. There also was a question from Will Tift. I wonder, um, perhaps Thomas or Nicole might have a suggestion. Some of our funded partners doing Older Americans Act service at the local level are leery of making major new investments, especially those that are one time in nature. What advice would you give them? Hi, uh, this is Thomas Cameron. So on on those types of major new investments, I think it's a case by case type of scenario, um, depending on what they are considering and what uh, funds that are available for those things, because we do have various different expenditure periods and timeframes on some of our time limited funding that are longer than 12 months. So it, it, they may have some additional time they just may not be aware of. I would always encourage them to work with their AAA if it's a, you know, a service provider that is contracted with the AAA to get that information. But if a AAA has this type of question, please reach out to Nicole's team, either through the local finance um, bureau staff or to Nicole directly, and she can work with you to provide some of those specifics and provide some advice and context that may be very helpful as uh, providers continue to assess those types of investments. Nicole, if you have anything to add, please do. Um, no, I would just encourage, um, you know, for your partners to work with you and relay any of those sorts of concerns so that you can bring those back to CDA. We have really made a um, a very strong attempt to work with our AAAs on standing these up and, and to hear these concerns and issues at the onset so that we're um, really utilizing these what are once in a lifetime opportunities to the um, betterment of the locals that you serve. And we are very aware that some of these are one time in nature, they come with a ramp up and then they come with a ramp down so that that can be a concern. But we're trying to craft them in such a way that you just get the absolute maximum out of this, you know, our access to tech would be a great example. One time in nature opportunity to go ahead and provide technology to those um, folks who need it at the county level, um, who maybe have, um, you know, some social isolation, or maybe they're just not confident using um, technology. But we're trying to craft that in such a way that they just benefit from it. And even if the program didn't continue here at CDA, which it's, it's not slated to at this time, um, there's still that long lasting impact at the local level. So I would just encourage um, you to to um, work with your subs and bring those concerns and comments back to us so that we can incorporate that in how we are implementing these items. Great. Looks like we don't have any more hands raised um, in the participants. Um, 
There was a question about uh, this being available in Spanish um, and uh, the video um, and the recording is not available in Spanish. However, we will have a transcript um, and that transcript can be made available in Spanish. Um, so um, if you'd like, we can follow up with you. Uh, it looks like Lulu was asking for that. We can follow up with you on a, a Spanish version of the transcript of this one. So it looks like uh, no other questions um, live or in the q and I think we've answered uh, all of the questions that have come in. Um, let's move to the last slide, Nelson, if we can. If you have any additional questions that come to mind um, that you'd like to ask us, feel free. You can email us directly. Um, it's communications at aging.ca.gov. Again, this webinar today is recorded and it will be posted on CDA's web channel. Um, you can also access information on CDA's website. It's aging.ca.gov. We want to thank everyone for your time this morning, um, and uh, we hope to see you soon. Thank you very much.